We're incredibly excited to be spending this special time of year in the state of Michoacán. Michoacán is known for its Day of the Dead celebrations and we've heard nothing but amazing things about the Dia de Muertos celebrations in Morelia, Pátzcuaro and Janitio. That's where we're going to be starting with our pre-Dia de Muertos celebrations in the capital city of Morelia. Then we're going to be traveling 60 kilometers west to the city of Pátzcuaro and then wrapping up the celebrations with a special experience in the island of Janitio. Hola amigos, we're Jenny and Kevin. Have you subscribed yet? Make sure to tap the bell so you don't miss any adventures with us. Last year we celebrated Dia de Muertos in Aguascalientes at the Festival Cultural de las Caraveras. And this time we're celebrating in Michoacán and we can already feel the difference. While that festival was lots of party, which is super fun by the way, we have a great video about it. In Michoacán, it already feels much more sentimental. Like we mentioned in our video last year, the Catrinas and Calaveras were popularized in the last half century or so thanks to the artist and husband of Frida Kahlo, Diego Rivera. But the roots of Dia de Muertos predate the arrival of the Europeans by thousands of years, and the Calaveras weren't necessarily the most emblematic part of the celebration. And when we get to Pátzcuaro, we'll be able to see more of the pre-Hispanic side of the celebration. In the center of Morelia, in Plaza de Armas, you have the beautiful kiosco in plaza decorated in Cempasúchil and an altar. When we first got to Morelia, we got the opportunity to see all of this come to life. If y'all would have been here and smelled this plaza, when they were putting all the cempasuchis, making the tapetes, and, and the altars, the smell was out of this world and the people were already getting hyped. If you get the opportunity to come to Morelia for Dia de Muertos and take advantage of the film festival at the same time, it's a great opportunity to get to all these festivals and be able to see this beautiful wonderland of Dia de Muertos come to life. If you're considering a visit to Morelia, the end of October to the beginning, of November I think are the best dates. There's tons going on for Halloween, for Dia de Muertos, there's a Feria del Pan. There's so, so much going on. But our first official Dia de Muertos activity is going to be attending a theatrical performance at the Teatro Matamoros for Performing Arts. As a part of the event, there's a walkthrough that is decorated with lights and Simbasuchi and I'm excited to see what else. For this particular event, it's recommended to arrive an hour early so you can enjoy all of this setup before the actual show. Uh, check out this beautiful display with wood shavings, con frijoles negros, and pasuchi. It's just so colorful and beautiful. And then you get to the top floor and there's a rooftop set up beautifully. I need my sunglasses for this. <gasps> Look at this altar. Wow, and the view, oh my God. This is awesome. Ooh, this looks really, really cool. Wow. The entire recorrido is a four-floor exhibit with each floor having a different aspect of art and tributes to Dia de Muertos, like this glow-in-the-dark, what is it, acrylic paint? It looks amazing. Wow, what a gift. The performance was acrobatic and puppeteered storytelling with a live orchestra. It was fun and beautiful, and we learned a lot about Purépecha legends around Dia y Noche de Muertos. We have arrived to Pascuaro. We took a bus from Morelia to Pascuaro for 60 pesos from La Línea, and now it's time to get ready for the occasion. Let's go get our face painted. In the very center of Pascuaro, there is the market with handicrafts and Dia de Muertos themed everything. Last night we noticed that there are face painters on that corner over there, so that's where we're gonna go. When you arrive to Pascuaro, at Plaza Vasco de Quiroa is the Plaza Grande where most of the events are going on here in Pascuaro. In the surrounding areas, you have a huge market, you have puestos de comida, places to get your face painted. The arches of the portales are beautifully decorated. You could also enjoy a cocktail, a drink, and even check out some of the businesses, altars for Dia de Muertos. A lot of the businesses use this space to uh, recognize and remember their own family members. And if you want to partake in some of the events that are going on they have a tourism office where you can get a full schedule and get a good idea of everything that there is to do here during the celebration. Yeah, you and the dogs are excited. Hello. 
the center of Plaza Quiroga, you found an altar dedicated to Don Vasco del Quiroga, the first bishop that arrived to the state of Michoacán. And around him you'll find the ofrendas, as well as Ware women and a man who are representative of the region and the community who are of Purépecha descent. Pátcuaro is the heart of los Purépechas, the indigenous peoples that have lived here long before the Spanish arrived. And it's their culture that continues to make Pátcuaro a special place today. In fact, the word Pátcuaro means the door to heaven, which we've heard a lot around here. People are proud of their town, La Puerta del Cielo. You can already feel the magic in the air for the holiday. Everyone's excited. People are eating, drinking, dancing. There's music everywhere. Showing you Pátzcuaro. Underneath the arches throughout Plaza Grande de Pátzcuaro, you'll find all the candies, just like in La Feria del Alpeñique de Toluca. That was our first time, now this is our second time experience, a whole candy fair like this, all Dia de Muertos themed and beautiful shapes that you can use to either eat, enjoy, or for your altar. See? Wow, these are also made of sugar paste with their refresco, pan dulce. Oh, you've got a little bee right here suckling on some sugar. How cute. The festivities in Pátzcuaro begin a few days before Dia de Muertos, also known as Noche de las Animas, Night of the Souls or Spirits. There are concerts, folkloric dance performances, and a Catrina parade. To go to Hanitzio, we booked a tour with Ruta de las Animas for 900 pesos. Since it's our first time, we decided it would be best to be guided by locals and then perhaps venture out on our own next year. We heard things could get a little hectic with the high volumes of people, so participating in a tour helps to streamline the crowds. It was a relief to not have to wait in the three-hour line for a spot on the boat. Hanging out here with Reno. Are you ready, Reno? Reno's gonna be joining us to La Isla de Hanitzio. Love his outfit, I love his energy. The dog is so well behaved and he's so ready for me. The island of Hanitzio is the main island in the lake of Pátzcuaro. It's home to less than 5,000 Purépecha people, but tonight they'll be receiving hundreds of thousands of visitors wanting to witness their sacred traditions. Llegamos a Hanitzio and you arrive to a market with smells and delicious. Wow, there are tons of streets, like little narrow streets with souvenir shops, artesanías, and this is actually the way to the Monumento de Jose Maria Morelos. I wonder how much of a hike it's really gonna be. The first thing that comes to mind to me is how much this pueblo influenced the idea of coco. Just walking up the streets, I can feel like I'm in that colorful I feel like I'm in scene movie. in the movie. Yeah, it's incredible. We're on the island, we're climbing up, but there's a really long line to just really move anywhere. We were our tour guide was telling us that while Hanito is the most popular, it's not necessarily the best one to see. It's just one of many. It's the one that happens to be most popular. So when you come, if you do come, you want to come with lots of patience, lots of understanding, be ready to take it slow and just be with an open mind. So we're going to wait here, wait our turn, and we'll get there when we get there. 
Around 7, 8 o'clock, the velaciones start, which is the ceremonies for uh, the cemeteries. So right now, there's just a ton of people trying to get in. It's like 7.30, mm -hmm. and they want to make sure that you're in there for the beginning of the ceremony, so. I don't know why, but I feel really anxious about getting in. Wow, absolutely stunning. El Panteón de Janitzio was magical, beautiful, but uncomfortable due to the massive crowds. Visitors became impatient, rude, and started fights. But rather than allow the negativity to overshadow our experience, we decided to focus on the light and save this conversation for a separate video where we'll explain what happened. For now, let's focus on what matters. Empezaron a hacer eso. Y ahorita ya tengo 57. Ajá. Y es cuando ya empecé yo a fijarme en lo que se traía. Ajá. Y a mí me gustaba mucho venir cuando estaba chiquilla. Ajá. Y ya decía, ay, este, nomás le trajimos tres años a mi abuelita, descansa en paz, en la corona. Está pues. Sí. La tumba allí. Y entonces ya terminaron los tres años, ya nomás se viene, ya nomás se trae eso. Ya terminando sus tres años la ofenda. O sea, ya ellos. se cambia la, ya se cambia. la idea. Okay. Ya no. La manera en que ponen ofrenda. Eso. Ajá. 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 ¿Y este entonces para quién es? Este es mi, para mi papá. Es la primera vez su ya salida de mi casa. Oh. Ya pues, es una despedida. Ay. Sí. Que descanse en paz su papito. No, pues sí. Estaba toda la con su salud. No tenía nada sino pues era una tristeza cuando yo me cayó una enfermedad, estoy anémica y él siempre me decía, ay hija, tú no me vas a componer, tú si te me vas a ir, y lloraba mucho. Se preocupaba papá, mucho por usted. Déjame, no te it's important that the other muertos be treated with love, respect, and an understanding that not only is it not Mexican Halloween, but it's a sacred remembering of one's loved ones and ancestors. People often think that the other muertos celebrates death, but in actuality, it celebrates life. The lives of your loved ones, while at the same time respectfully preserving and honoring the important tradition that dates back to thousands of years and is the religious and cultural legacy of the ancestors of the Mexica, Maya, Tlaxcaltec, Chichimec, and other native peoples combined that make up what is today Mexico. There are regional differences as to how it's celebrated and the manner in which it's observed is influenced of course by a family's particular religion or like here in Hanitzio, their particular indigenous nation. In 2003, UNESCO proclaimed Mexico's Dia de Muertos an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Trying to leave the island was almost as hectic as trying to get on, and when we arrived to the port in Pátzcuaro, there were 10 times as many people waiting to get on a boat to Hanitio. Yo, personally, if I was to come back to Hanitio, I would have come back just to listen to the bandas and check out the lions. The party here looks amazing. Look at this stuff. Look at the lions and the parties around there. You have to give people something to do while they wait in line. We've made it to the next town as part of this tour is El Pueblo de Arocutin, which also is known to have very beautiful ofrendas and Dia de Muertos traditions, much less crowded than Janitzio, and very friendly and welcoming as well. <gasps> wow. You know, this one is just as beautiful, and I think I feel a little bit more relaxed and just able to appreciate it a little bit more while I'm not so worried about my surroundings. It's gorgeous. Aquí, aquí sí siento un poco más el ambiente espiritual. Arocutin is a small town of about 500 people. We saw more families gathered around the grave sites decorated with Sempasuchil, whose scent helps to guide the spirits from the underworld to the land of the living so they could reunite with their family during this one special night of the year. 
candles to light the way of the four cardinal directions, and food laid out as part of the ofrenda to replenish the spirit after their long journey. We're in the bell tower right now for a bird's eye view of the cemetery and the bell is going off every five minutes which is said to help guide the spirits here to their, where their loved ones are waiting for them. To be able to have this opportunity and come and visit Michoacan and these uh, towns and be able to honor people who have passed away and get to see a little bit of the traditions that they do is, is very heart moving, it's very motivating. I uh, taken this trip out to, to Mexico and get to reconnect with my roots, been able to learn more about my family. It like motivates me after this uh, opportunity to be able to go out and visit my family members in San Luis Potosí, in Veracruz, and, and Jenny's family in Zacatecas, and con, con más orgullo y, y, y poder conectar like, like right now, my, my, my instinct is we're here visiting other people's difuntos and I wish that I was at home providing this kind of altar for my family. And I think from learning from this experience and learning from, from everything that we've traveled, I hope that I can bring these customs and traditions to my future family and to other family members so that I can honor them and love them. The whole adventure here through YouTube is that I want to leave these memories and kind of like pick up a little bit from everywhere that we go in order to be able to teach our children and our future generations that it's important to keep those roots and important to keep these traditions because this is, this is who we are and this is where we came from and this is where we leave and I just hope that I can pass these on and and that my family feels proud of me wanting to reconnect with our roots and, and yeah, I just I feel very blessed to have this opportunity to be here today. So thank you Michoacan and thank you to the communities that allowed us to these uh, cemeteries to be able to honor their families respectfully and thank you so much. In our next video, we'll talk about the chaos that ensued in Janitzio and our tips for planning your visit to Michoacán for Dia de Muertos. If people are going to behave this way, then none of us deserve to be here.